Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Speedstar101, and welcome to Firewatch. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from, in, from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals, your approacher. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. Uh, we're gonna go with, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. One week, that's fast, that's fast. It's very fast. Oh, whoa. You got this backpack? Can I click? Can I click these buttons? Are there any secrets in here? Can I crouch or jump? I guess not. I guess not. Whoa. I, sh I probably should get to the truck. I'm over here walking around like there's something here. Okay. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. It is great. It is great. Yeah. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Uh, I don't drink beer, but I mean, if that's what they're into, right? Julia wants a dog. Okay. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle, and Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad. <laughs> um, you pick up the beagle. Beagle or German Shepherd? Well, so get this, my girlfriend, uh, she, I believe her dog, uh, is a beagle. So they, they see with their nose, right? Those are the dogs. Um, his name is Oscar, but, uh, when, when we move in together, we want to get a German shepherd. So I guess we're going to go with the German shepherd. Mayhem. Mayhem's an excellent dog. He loves wrestling with you in the park and goes with Julia on her runs. Even though he's too big to bring to his school, Julia loves him all the same. Mayhem is a friend, child, and pet all rolled into one. I've never had a dog before, but my aunt has a dog and uh, I, I love that dog. Well, she had a dog. I loved that, I loved that dog to death. His name was Bo. You talk, uh, you talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. It's 1979. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That would be pretty good one day, why rush? Um, yeah, me and my girl, we, we do not want kids. We don't want, not want kids. For one, yes, like, they're not very smart. Or, and, uh, they're not really good at anything. In the beginning, that is. I mean, <laughs> look at me. I'm playing video games. You think my parents love me? <laughs> okay, that was kind of sad. She looks away out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, you assure. You assure her. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she says. Six months later, you get engaged lying in bed on a Sunday morning. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, this game is beautiful. So um, about two so about two years ago, I actually played this game on my Xbox, and the reason the reason why I've waited two years just to play this game again is because, for one, I have the actual computer set up. I'm playing on my PC now. Um, I I have the resources to play this game, and I don't know. I just I kind of put off playing this game for a while. So I, now I'm coming back and I'm playing the game. 
and now this time on my PC two years later I feel bad for that guy that commented on the video he's like yo I've been looking for new let's plays of this game and I really like yours and I I never made another video which is sad but now I'm back I'm back into this game it's actually it's quite beautiful therefore trail ahead do not forget to check in you're in their country learn to live with bears no fireworks guys don't be don't be shooting fireworks in this national park here warning therefore trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers therefore is a primitive backcountry trail i can't really read that okay oh, this this is beautiful this is really beautiful Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's she's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. Both terrible options. As adults, you talk through your problems. Um, I guess you getting mad at her, you're talking to her, you couldn't eventually, like, talk it out later? I, I don't know. You ignore her, that's not a good option either. You don't talk to her about the problem? Always talk about the problem. Even if you guys get mad at each other, as long as, as, long as you guys don't throw punches or say anything, you might regret. But, you're getting mad and talking to her about whatever she you know wants to talk about whatever makes you mad talk it out don't ignore her because the if you ignore her and just brush off the problem like that it'll just come back to you guys later so just just talk it out you call her an inconsiderate oh she tells you to go screw yourself do not be such a baby you call her selfish she knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings that right there, that's not what you're supposed to do. You were supposed to talk to her like an adult. Talk to your people like adults, all right? Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Flex like He-Man. He-Man. You look awesome. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I do. I do look pretty good. <laughs> wow. Very, very orange. Oh, wow. Look at that. That looks, that is beautiful. That is beautiful right there. There's a sign up here. Two forks, fire lookout, eight miles. That's pretty cool. Space bar to climb over obstructions got it that's beautiful that's a beautiful sight 1982 during the summers you and julia enjoy walking mayhem at night there's a festival in town it brings in folks from far away places one of them tries to mug you with a knife uh oh mayhem runs may me moo D -d dog julia yells she gets she gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker, you scare him away, you beat his face in. How am I gonna scare him away? How am I gonna scare him away? <gasps> Boo! I scared you! Oh! Like freaking scare him away like that? You beat his face in. Probably that's probably not. I guess I'll scare him. You reach into your pocket. Like you've got a gun and threatened to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Okay. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered by a job at Yale. Oh, Yale is... In Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her to take the job. Convince her not to take the job. 
agree if she commutes back and forth. I would move if my if my wife wanted to go two thousand miles away to go to her job to do her job that she obviously really wants to do and she wants to move. I would definitely move. That's that's no problem to me. But you can't convince her not to take the job. That's that's stupid. And then commuting that that's not a good choice either. I I guess that's the better choice over this one though. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that, she says that will be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. Tell her not to pass this. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees and flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and, and try to forget about it. No. Talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Oh, wow. That gave me chills. That gave me chills reading that. Uh, you both decide to keep it a secret for now. Wow. This is beautiful. <laughs> he man. That's funny. Mayhem is getting older. He's got silver hair down his back and slows down at night. You and Julia walk him to the bar to see your friends, and it feels and it feels like nothing has changed. Julia goes back to the university. Julia's affliction got gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. <sighs> Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Oh man, this that went downhill very quickly. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Danielle, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You de you are determined to take care of her yourself. That this is this is crazy. So my my wife, uh, she uh, she works in a caretaking home. She's actually going to school right now to be a to get like a CNA certificate because she's trying to be a, like an RN, and she works in a caretaking facility. She tell she was actually telling me today, um, one of the residents, uh, she she's like this so like every once i think every two months you get a person that's very talkative right but after that day just blank just blank no words nothing really comes out of her mouth you know like she doesn't really say anything and um her grandmother too i went to go visit her we i got to meet her nana she's got like she's got dementia i got to go meet her she would ask me like the same questions you know over and over again which is fine i didn't find that annoying or anything that's just I just like thought it was very sad. That's yeah, like seeing that in person gets you a little choked up when you look at that and you listen to the person talking. If if it was me though, like let's say my wife had dementia, I would definitely be determined to take care of her by myself. I, I wouldn't want her to go to a like you know a care facility. And um and I've never I've never had to take care of a human being before, but I've 
bet that it's very difficult just by what my girlfriend tells me what she has to go through you know at the care facility she works at it's, it's a lot of work but i mean it's also a lot of money to put them into a care facility so that's a that's a tough decision there oh wow this is this is beautiful oh good 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 get me in the forest so that way i don't gotta think about that sad stuff really pretty can i not go down here can i go down there nope can i come up here nope okay good <gasps> it's a deer that was awesome it is impossibly hard the worst is when you get mad at her like when she tries to cook her own food you can't do anything without her she can't do anything without you <laughs> sounds about right When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do, the first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Put a chair in the front door, in the front bedroom door. Oh, so like you kind of block it. Okay, okay kind of lock her in you trust that she sleeps like a rock both are terrible options but i feel like this would be a better option over this one because like what if you put the chair in front of the door and she starts freaking out you know it's terrible you go to the same bar at the boring end of pearl street it's nice there over time you tell sheila the bartender everything is a huge weight off your chest. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. Look forward to those nights. Oh. One night you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten, and you are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia they can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in a paper for a job. You take it. Whew. Is that where like the actual game like begins now? This is the job I took. I I took a job to be a fire lookout. What am I like a ranger? Am I a park ranger? This looks really nice. This looks amazing. I don't really have anything to say right now, but I think I really like I really like this. Like you can see, you can see like the land here. You can even tell like all the way back out there. Those are pictures, but I just like that simplicity. I like the simplicity of this game, like the art style. It's very nice. Very nice. Turn on the power. Generator switch. Slapped it. I just slapped it. Bah! <laughs> Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hi. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Thoroughfare Tower, huh? No, they're not. They're not on. Cookbook. National Forest Guidebook. Okay. Hello, Two Forks. Come back. Pick up your radio. All right, fine. I'll respond. Left shift to reply. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Delilah. That's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great <laughs> idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... <laughs> can I sleep, sleep forever? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. 
I uh, killed three ex-husbands. That's your mom. Nobody can stand you. You're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. <laughs> okay. Good night. Bye. What is this? Fire. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Okay, I did not know that was going to happen. Firewatch.